Hi friends, welcome to the Daily Current Affairs by Neo IAS. So today on 25th July 2019, our topics are Pencil, Prathan Mantri Lekhu Vyapari Manthan Yojana, then UNAIDS, then Measles, Current Affairs Capsule, Mapped Program and Prelims Question Revision Series. Then our first topic that is Pencil. So, uh, the news is that the Union Minister for Labour and Employment, okay, uh, actually he informed Lok Sabha that 361 complaints of child labour uh, have been resolved via pencil. That is pencil portal, that is pencil uh, dot gov dot in. Okay, this is the news. So, we know this pencil, it stands for platform for effective enforcement for no child labor clear then so uh, actually what is this pencil uh, this pencil uh, you have to remember this pencil it is a portal or we can say it's an electronic platform that aims at involving center state and district governments and even the civil society and also the general public in achieving the target of child labor free society clear so as a whole we can say it's a portal on child labor elimination then so uh, here uh, i've got a diagram and here you can see the main objectives of pencil okay what are they effective enforcement then uh, better coordination then involves general public okay that's a very important thing then uh, it also facilitates convergence, then monitoring of NCLP and also tracks the rehabilitation of child. Clear? These are the main objectives of pencil. Then uh, as I said, this pencil portal, it has got five components and they are child tracking, then complaint corner, then state government and uh, NCLP. NCLP means National Child Labor Project. And uh, fifth one, it is convergence. Okay, so these are the main five components of pencil. And uh, for its um, program, uh, what they do is that in each district, they will nominate a DNO. DNO means district nodal officer. And this uh, district nodal o uh, officer, actually he will be the one uh, who is going to receive the complaints. So, what he do, actually, uh, within the 48 hours of receiving complaints, this DNO, he will, uh, first of all, he will check whether the complaint is genuine. That means, he will check the genuineness of that complaint. And uh, if he find, uh, or if he found that the complaint is genuine, he will take necessary steps. Clear? That means, he will take uh, rescue measures in coordination with the police. Fine. Then, about the background, we know uh, India, India has ratified two core conventions of International Labour Organization in June uh, 2017. Actually, this, uh, this shows the country's commitment to a child labour free nation. Okay, so the two core conventions, they are Convention 138 regarding the admission of age to empl employment. Then convention 182 regarding worst forms of child labor. Okay, so these two are the two core conventions. Then uh, next uh, I will say what is this NCLP. We know uh, National Child Labor Project. It is a center sector scheme and it was launched in 1988 for rehabilitation of child labor. Okay. So, we can say it is the basic objective of uh, suitably rehabilitating the ch uh, children, which uh, mean the children withdrawn from employment sites, thereby reducing the incidence of child labor in areas of non-concentration of child labor. Clear? So, that is the basic objective of this NCLP. And uh, under this NCLP, uh, uh, they establish special schools or we can say rehabilitation centers for rehabilitating the child labors and uh, they are opened so that 
they can be mainstreamed into formal schooling system and uh, they also provide what they do they these centers also provide non formal education then uh, vocational training supplementary nutrition and also uh, stipend to children withdrawn from employment clear and this is about nclp uh, ncpl then what is uh, next next we can see the revised form so the revised uh, nclp it has been uh, revised expanded and aligned to the new legislative provisions okay so the legislative changes have been accompanied by creation of additional institutional mechanism at the district state and national level clear so this is the re revised nclp okay then our next topic the pradhan mantri lakh vyapari manthan yojana so uh, why it came in news because the labor ministry has notified the pension scheme pradhan mantri lakh vyapari manthan yojana for self employed workers in the country okay so uh, we know this pradhan mantri lakh vyapari manthan yojana uh, basically it's a pension scheme for retailers and traders benefiting over 3 crore self employed workers in the country okay so uh, we can say the scheme uh, it's an extension of uh, pradhan mantri shram yogi manthan yojana okay then uh, in the scheme it will make all beneficiaries eligible for a monthly pension of rupees 3000 after the age of 60 at a minuscule monthly contribution and uh, the government it has uh, it has year marked rupees 750 crore for the scheme in the union budget of 2019-20 okay then so if you ask for the eligibility uh, all shopkeepers and even the self employed persons as well as retail traders uh, with gst turnover below 1.5 crore that point you have to remember so those persons having gst turn uh, turnover below 1.5 crore that means these type persons and the self employed person or either they can be a retail trader uh, and they should be aged between 18 to 40 years can enroll for the scheme okay and also uh, interested persons interested persons can enroll themselves through uh, over 3.25 lakh common service centers spread across the country fine then the government they will make a matching contribution into subscribers account and the provisions of this scheme shall apply to lakh vyaparis as the name suggests means uh, lakh vyaparis means who are self employed or we can say working as a shop owner then even it can be a retail trader a rice mill trader i mean a rice mill owner then uh, um, even uh, an owner of a small hotels so all these come under the category of lekho vyapari and also other lekho vyaparis okay for all these people this provision of scheme apply fine then the life insurance corporation of india has been chosen as the pension fund manager responsible for managing the pension fund Uh, that means central record keeping agency and uh, responsible for pension pay out okay so you have to remember the name about uh, life insurance corporation of india they are the uh, they are they are chosen as the pension fund manager responsible for managing the pension fund clear then our next topic that is unaids okay so why is this came in news is that the uh, the joint U un program on aids which is commonly known as unaids actually this program is facing a world challenge afflicting the global aids response that is the news so uh, about this unaids we know it's a leading global effort to end aids as a public health threat by 2030 as part of the sustainable development goal okay that you have to remember it's a very important point then 
the as I said, this is a joint United Nations program on HIV and AIDS, that is UNAIDS, and it is the main advocate for accelerated, comprehensive, and coordinated global action on HIV or AIDS pandemic. And was established in 1994 and was started operations in 1996. Okay. And uh, this mission of UNAIDS, it is to lead, uh, strengthen and also to support an expanded response to HIV and AIDS. Okay, that is its mission. So, uh, what are they? Uh, it can even include preventing transmission of HIV. Okay, then uh, even providing care and also uh, we can say support to those already living with this virus. And also uh, naturally reducing the vulnerability of individuals and communities to HIV and alleviating the impact of this epidemic. Clear? Then, this UNAIDS, it seeks to prevent the HIV AIDS from, um, that means HIV uh, AIDS epidemic from be, uh, being a severe pandemic and uh, we know it is headquartered in Geneva in Switzerland and uh, uh, it shares some site facilities with WHO. Fine. Then, it is a member of United Nations Development Group and the agency actually it promotes GIPA principle that is greater involvement of people living with HIV which was formulated in 1994 and it was endorsed by the United Nations in 2001 and 2006. Okay, so you have to remember this agency it promotes the GIPA principle. Okay, then this UNAIDS, it has got five goals, which are the leadership and advocacy for effective action on the pandemic, then uh, strategic information and technical support to guide effort against AIDS worldwide, then third one, tracking, monitoring and also evaluation of the pandemic and of responses to it, then fourth one, civil society engagement and the development of strategic partnerships. Then fifth one, mobilization of resources to support an effective response. So these are the five goals of UNAIDS. Okay, so please go, uh, go through these points. So you, you can use this in, while you are writing your mains answer. Clear? Then our next topic is measles. So, um, the news is that the Sri Lanka it became the fourth country in the Asian region to eliminate measles. Okay. So, the Sri Lanka it became the fourth country in the Asian region after Bhutan, then Maldives, then Timor Leste uh, to eliminate measles. So, the measles it is considered as, an, uh, considered as eliminated when a country it interrupts uh, transmission of an indigenous virus for at least three years. Okay, then only it will be considered as eliminated. Fine. Then, uh, about measles, we know uh, this measles, it's a highly contagious viral disease. And it is also known as uh, rubiola. And it is a highly contagious respiratory infection. It is And it is caused by virus. And uh, the particular symptom is that it causes a rash all over the body. So, if you ask for the transmission, uh, measles, uh, measles, it is transmitted via droplets. That means uh, from the nose, droplets from nose, mouth or throat of an infected person. Clear? So, uh, another thing is that uh, uh, it remains an important cause of death among young children globally uh, despite the availability of a safe and effective vaccine. So, mainly, uh, mostly uh, in a large scale, it is affecting young children. Okay. So, uh, uh, your next two points is that under the Global Vaccine Ac Action Plan. Okay. Measles and rubella, they are targeted for elimination in five WHO regions by 2020. And uh, we know the WHO is the lead technical agency which is responsible for coordination of immunization and surveillance activities supporting all countries to achieve achieve this goal. Clear? Then, 
uh, the important symptoms are uh, running, uh, running nose, then uh, watery eyes, then conjunctivitis, sometimes conjunctivitis is seen, then uh, dry hacking type of cough, then photophobia, then uh, as I said reddish brown rash is present, watery eyes, then uh, overall there will be generalized body aches. Okay, these are some of the common symptoms. Then another particular symptom uh, or we can say it is a particular differential diagnosis of measles. What is it? Coplex port. This coplex port it is a very small uh, grayish white spot and it has got a bluish white center and it is present in mouth, inside cheeks and throat. Okay, so you have to remember about this coplex port. Uh, it is a particular symptom of this measles. There. So, there are uh, basically there are two types which are the measles and also rubella or German measles. So, this measles, uh, this is the standard form and is caused by the rubella virus and uh, rubella or German measles, we know this is caused by the rubella virus. So, next uh, prevention. We, know, we all know vaccination, it is the most important tool for prevention. And the measles vaccine, it has been used since 1960s itself. Okay, the best method is giving preventive vaccine. And also the WHO, it recommends immunization for all susceptible ch uh, children and adults for whom measles uh, vaccination, it is not contraindicated. Okay, so uh, reaching all children with uh, two doses of measles vaccine, then it can be administered either alone or in uh, MR that is measles rubella or in MMR that is measles uh, mumps and rubella or in MMRV that means uh, measles mumps rubella uh, varicella combination. Uh, so, um, you can say it should be the standard for all national immunization programs. Clear? That's about, uh, that's all about its prevention. Then uh, today in current affair capsule we will be dealing with three topics or first topic it is National Institute of Occupational Health. So uh, we know this National Institute of Occupational Health it is a premier public health institute and it was established in 1966 as OHRA. OHRA means Occupational Health Research Institute and it was located in Ahmedabad. And uh, this OHRI, it was later, it was renamed as National Institute of Occupational Health, that is NIOH. And it was renamed in 1970. Okay, so uh, the National Institute of Mines Health, that is NIMH, we know it is an uh, autonomous institute under the Ministry of Mines and it has been dissolved. And this NIMH, it has been merged with ICMR. Okay, that is uh, National Institute of Occupational Health uh, which is located in Ahmedabad under the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare with all assets and liabilities. Clear, this is the news. So, that is about uh, the National Institute of Occupational Health. The next topic it is uh, Drasiana Cambodiana. So, uh, actually it is a uh, particular type of a dragon tree species. So, you can see the figure and more details in today's Hindu paper. Uh, so, these types of questions are usually asked in our village. That is why I am discussing. So, this Drasiana Cambodiana, we know it is a dragon tree species. Okay. And uh, the, its sap turns bright red after coming in contact with the air. And uh, uh, it was discovered for the first time in India in the Donka Sarpo area. Uh, in Donka Sarpo area of Asa. If you ask for the particular site, this is the Donka Sarpo area of West Karbi Anglong uh, of Asa. Okay, so you have to remember it is a dragon tree species, first thing, and it, uh, it turns bright red color after it comes in contact with air. Okay, then it is located in Asa, or it was discovered in Asa for the first time. And this plant yields dragon's blood or a, a bright red dressing, and it is used. Since ancient times as a medicine, then uh, even for body oil, then for varnish, then for uh, dye, etc. Clear? So, that is about uh, this Drasiana Cambodiana. Next topic, it is Global Innovation Index. 
So, uh, it's a small topic. Um, the India, it has jumped five places to rank 52 in the Global Innovation Index in 2019. Up from 57, it had in the last year's ranking. So, in the previous year, it was uh, 57 and now its rank is 52. Okay. Then, today in MapEd program, we will be continuing with major crops in India. And today we will be dealing with coarse cereals or millets. We know this coarse cereals and millets, they are short duration, warm weather or curry crop used both as food and fodder. So, important millets, we know it's jowar, bajra and raki. So, the coarse, uh, coarse cereals and millets, they are grown in areas with high temperature. Hence, they are called dry land crop because they can be grown in areas with approximately 50 to 100 centimeter rainfall. So, they are known as dry land crops. Okay. So, uh, though, they, though they are known as coarse grains, they are having very high nutritional value. For example, this ragi, you know, it is very rich in iron, calcium and other, uh, another type of micronutrients and so, uh, uh, this coarse cereals, they are having high nutritional value. So, first, uh, about jowa, we know it is the third most important food crop with respect to area and protection and uh, it is a rain fed crop mostly grow, uh, grown in the moist areas which hardly needs irrigation. Okay, so major jowa producing states, they were Maharashtra, Karnataka, Andhra and Madhya Pradesh in 2011-12 details. Okay. So, that is about this jowa. Then bajra, we know it grows well on sandy soil and shallow black soil. And major bajra producing states, they were Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra, Gujarat and Haryana. And ragi, we know it is a crop of dry region. And it grows well on red, black, sandy, loamy and shallow black soil. And major ragi producing states, they are Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Himachal, Uttarakhand, uh, then Arunachal Pradesh, etc. So, as a whole, if you take, top, if you ask for top 3 states with maximum production of total coarse cereals, they are Maharashtra, Karnataka and Rajasthan. Then, uh, so in the last class, we were discussing with um, groundnut and, uh, and I asked you to find out where, where, where the directorate of groundnut research is located. Okay, so the answer, the directorate of groundnut research, we know is the first crop based national research center in India under ICAR and it was established on uh, 1st October 1979 at Junagadh on a lease land from Gujarat Agricultural University. So, uh, you have to remember directorate of uh, groundnut research it is located in Junagadh in Gujarat. Clear? So, today uh, your question is please find where the IIMR, that is Indian Institute of Millets Research is located. Okay, so please uh, try to find the answer and please uh, study these major crops along with these classes, along, um, along with your studying your current affairs. So, please comment the answer in the comment section. Then uh, in map, uh, here I have got the status of millets in India and the major millets producing states, uh, states if you ask for the finger millet or ragi, they are Karnataka, Maharashtra, Uttaranchal, Tamil Nadu, Andhra and Orissa. Okay, then the major uh, bajra or pearl millet producing states, they are Gujarat, leading it Rajasthan, then Gujarat, Uttar Pradesh, Haryana, Andhra, etc. And uh, about sorghum or jowar, major jowar producing states, they are Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, then Uttar Pradesh, Haryana, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, etc. Okay. Then in uh, prelims question revision series, today your question is consider the following pairs. And here uh, you have got regions and well known for the production of. And uh, that is Kinor, Arcanet, then uh, Meva, Mango, then Coromandel, Soya Bean. So which of the above pairs these are correctly matched? And your options A, uh, 1 and 2 only, B, 3 only, C, 1, 2 and 3 and D, none. Okay. So, uh, first you have to um, understand the basic thing that is um, 
your um, this arachnid it is grown mainly in southern region. You can classify it into region type. We know this arachnid it is grown mainly in southern region. Mango we know it is in central and south India. Then soya bean it is predominantly in central India. So if you have this basic concern, you can uh, eliminate from the options. So our first option it is kinnor and arachnid. Okay. So we know kinnor that is placed in Himachal. It is famous for apples. And this arachnid it is mostly it is uh, confined to Karnataka, Kerala, and Assam. That is southern region. Clear. Then second uh, second option it is mevas and mango. We know this mevas it is a place in Haryana. It is not famous for mango. Uttar Pradesh actually Uttar Pradesh is famous for mango. So that option is also wrong. So, uh, similarly, next option that is coromandel and soya bean. We know uh, coromandel coast, it is not famous for soya bean. So, uh, top two producers of soya bean, they are Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra, which are outside coromandel coast. Okay. So, uh, therefore, D is the correct option. That means D means none. Okay. So, our answer is D. Okay, that's all for today's session. So, if you have any doubt, please feel free to comment it in the comment session. So, uh, thank you for listening. Good night.